Other people's unhealthy habits don't make their claims any less correct. If a meth head tells a cigarette smoker, hey, those cigs are bad for you, man. Sure, it's hypocritical, but at the end of the day, they're right. Things I wish I knew when I first started going to the gym. Intentional weight loss is a trap. Most people who go to the gym to lose weight will gain it back in three years. Gym culture is actually pretty toxic. You are not a better person because you go to the gym. Exercise because it makes you feel good, not because you want to lose weight. You can work out from home. You don't have to go to a gym. Bad people are awesome. Gym bros are not. Health is not a moral imperative. You don't have to be in shape to be healthy. And maybe, finally, just don't. Let's keep it short and sweet. You know... I could go over why everything he said was wrong, and I have in previous videos, but I want to focus your attention on one thing. These people complain about body shaming all the time, but in the same breath will shame people for being in shape, skinny, just plain not fat, or just going to the gym. I am going to be that annoying fat bitch. Like, I am not going to put things gracefully and pander to thinness. I'm going to make my fatness known, and fatness in general known because we are literally silenced and ignored so yeah i'm gonna be loud yeah i'm gonna be bitter yeah i'm gonna make a lot of content about fatness and anti-fatness we've tried being graceful we've tried being kind and understanding all that does is exhaust us i'm gonna yell for all the fat people who can't i'm gonna yell for the fat people who are ignored I'm going to yell for the fat people without platforms, but at the same time, all credit goes to black fat women who created this movement. Listen to me, but listen to them too. Listen to them first. Listen to them more. Fat activism would be nothing without them. You did not try kindness. Remember when you shamed a kid for losing weight? When you could have just sat there and minded your business? No one would have cared. If you hadn't opened your mouth, the reactions you are getting are a consequence of your own actions. Oh, back at it again. We haven't had a comment like this in a while. So this is just your general PSA that you can be fat and healthy just like you can be thin and unhealthy. Like, yeah, there's people who are fat and unhealthy, but not every fat person is unhealthy. Just like not every thin person is healthy. Crazy concept. It's so hard to wrap your head around, I'm, I'm sure. But let's stop assuming health just on how someone looks or how much someone weighs because there's so many factors that go into health. So, thanks for your comment. I swear to God, if I have to explain risk factor one more time, I'm going back to the bottle. There's non-smokers who get cancer. People who wear seatbelts die in car accidents. People who have a sh parachute can still die if they jump out of a plane. People who wear sunscreen and cover up can still get cancer. Preventative care does not entirely prevent whatever the fuck you're trying to prevent. It does, however, reduce the risk. If you ask someone why they think being fat is bad and they tell you it's because it's unhealthy, immediately stop listening to anything else they have to say. Because cultural fat phobia predated any medical argument against body size. This bias influenced doctors' thinking and affected all the advice they gave patients and all the research that was published. And if you don't believe me, Google the obesity paradox. Unironically, I fucking love this lady because her stupidity gives me an excuse to absolutely go in. Number one, cultural fat phobia does not predate medical arguments against being fat. That's just wrong. As I've stated a few times now, well-respected Greek physician Hippocrates was associating obesity with poor health outcomes over 2,400 years ago. Number two, the obesity paradox describes the phenomenon observed by certain studies in which overweight people, not obese, tend to live longer and have greater survival against chronic disease. The problem is with these studies is that they don't correct for behaviors. Gonzalez and others 2010 found that just by correcting for smoking, the lowest mortality was found between a BMI of 20 and 24.9. These studies were confirmed by the later Buranese and, and others 2016 study 
This was a 32-year longitudinal study and involved over 100,000 people in the medical field who did not have cancer or cardiovascular disease at the start of the study. The study not only looked at mortality, but also took into account low-risk behaviors. The study defined these behaviors as never smoking, being physically active, moderate alcohol consumption, and an AHEI score in the upper two-fifths. When considering all these factors, the study found that by engaging in these behaviors, a BMI of around 18.5 to 22.4 was associated with the lowest risk of mortality, cancer, and cardiovascular disease. The second part of the paradox always baffled me because it's essentially saying normal weight people live longer, but fat people live longer with chronic illness. This second part of the paradox has its own issues, but by itself, it's still not the win that the fat activists think it is. And I'll get into that on a later date. Yeah, it's fine. No, no, wait. I'm fat. I'm cool with it, okay? I get you guys, you all, it happens every time. Everyone clams up. They want to be like, no, stop it. You're beautiful. <laughs> Like, yeah, I know. I didn't say it was ugly, okay? They're not the same, all right? If a short person was like, I'm short, you would be like, no, stop it. You're smart. Like, they're not the same. Anyways, if you want to listen to a fat comedian that's actually funny, go check out Gabriel Iglesias. Your weight is almost as heritable as your height. This means your body size can be 70% determined by genetics. It's more nature than nurture. We're taught to believe that our weight is determined by how much willpower and control we have around food and exercise, that it's a matter of how hard we work, and if we are not thin, then it's our fault. But this is a lie. Aside from genetics, influences can include your stress level, your gut microbiome, medications you're on, past infections, sleep, access to food, your socioeconomic status, history of dieting, weight cycling, disordered eating, or childhood trauma, ethnicity, whether you were vaginal or C-section birth, and more. In fact, food and exercise are two of about a hundred different factors that can influence somebody's weight. It is nowhere near as simple or in our control to the extent that we're led to believe. You simply cannot know why somebody is the weight that they are. So stop shaming yourself and others for their body size and weight. Hey, look at this graph that shows obesity rates climbing at a rate that is way too fast for a genetic explanation. Or look at this neat study that shows differing rates of obesity in genetically identical populations in different geographical locations. Isn't that neat? A commenter on her video said, this makes me feel hopeless. And her response pisses me off because bitch, you fostered those feelings, you fucking doorknob. We're not like, we're not like endangered animals. No one is surprised because most people are smarter than goldfish and understand the concept of risk factors.